Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So everybody is talking about these GPTs that OpenAI just dropped and killed a bunch of startups, including mine. My company was generating marketing content by prompt building based on the user inputs. So this is kind of similar how GPTs are actually being built. I'm going to explain every step and what each section actually means when you're building your own GPT. So let's dive into it. So how are we going to create our own GPT? Let's go to this address. It's the same domain as the chat GPT. You just need to put GPTs slash discovery. There is already pre-built GPTs by chat GPT here. If you want to use any of them, you can feel free and play around. But um, we're going to create our own custom one today. So I'm going to click on this plus icon. And there you go, we have this interface now. So what we need to do, we need to describe what we want to create in this chat box, like we were speaking to ChatGPT. And then what this does, it creates this configuration file for us. So while we are speaking to ChatGPT, generates us custom prompts that we can use it later. This is kind of like custom instructions, but in a bit advanced way. So you can ask stuff to ChatGPT or tell stuff, tell, give some instructions and ChatGPT for you will create these instructions. But it's not just a custom prompt builder at this point. You can also upload some files, which is going to do fine tuning on the model based on your files. So it kind of combines, you know, all these custom prompts that people were selling prompts that I remember everywhere on social media when ChatGPT first came out in the market. So this is combined with fine tuning without calling the API for the fine tuning. So you just upload your files in here and it fine tunes it for you. And another thing is in here, you can combine this with the capabilities of ChatGPT, which is like, you know, uh, making a web request and then getting results from the web search or Dolly image generation. You can create an avatar, which adds it to your uh, custom GPT in here that you will see. And plus you can select interpreter. It's not selected by default. So if you want to do any kind of like a data manipulation, writing code or anything software engineering related, I advise you to actually check this box in here. And this is a bit of an advanced subject, but there is a section called add actions. So what are these actions specifically? This is kind of similar to function calling feature of the APIs. What you can do, you can actually call your own application. You need some details or you need to make a request to some of the APIs. So you go here and then you write your function. And here are some actually presets that you can see examples of. And this is actually the same as in the API documentation where they are explaining function calling feature. So if I click here, it's going to pre-populate the schema and everything. So how the function calling would work. You can also add it to authentication too, which if your application requires authentication, like, you know, login forms or any kind of like a token exchange, or simply you have an endpoint that um, old school API key that would solve the authentication for you. You can also do that in here, or you can just uh, fetch public data or make a request to a public API. So what does that do? So when you give custom instructions to your GPT, you can actually provide a service from your own application that ChatGPT, once it's done as a part of the workflow, it can call any of these endpoints or any of these functions that you defined. And you can populate stuff in your application, in your database, or you can just, I don't know, create users or um, edit user information or basically you know you can update anything in your application or write anything to your application to your database only limit is your imagination at this point so let's quickly create one together and i will show you how this actually works i want to create And you will see this little gear icon. That means that ChatGPT is actually providing us, creating us this custom 
prompt so we can use it later just like the instructions feature of the chat gpt as you can see here it already gave it a name it created a description and also instructions so this is a custom prompt and also created us some default conversation starters what does that mean so when you come to this GPT, you can just click one of these options and it would start doing the task that you have instructed it to do. And if I go back to my chat in here and give more information to chat GPT, then it will customize this configuration, customize this custom prompt for me, and it will be more aligned with, with my requirements. Plus, as I said at the beginning, you can upload files, your PDFs. This was already a feature uh, you would be able to speak to your PDF files. There are a lot of plugins for that. Also, they have combined all these capabilities like web browsing, all this code interpreter and doll E, which was already combined with the regular chat GPT. Plus you can do function calling. So what you're gonna have is custom prompts, fine tuning with the files that you uploaded and major capabilities of chat GPT. And plus the function calling that was not available for the chat GPT, what it was available for the API. So you get to use full power of chat GPT with GPTs. I hope it was helpful for you. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.